Time for your morning news now. Eau Claire law enforcement continues to mourn the loss of Sheriff Ron Kramer. After a two-month investigation, the Sheriff's Department said on Wednesday Kramer died by suicide. The department says Kramer's death is a reminder that first responders also need someone to reach out to. Back on September 13th, Eau Claire County employees found Kramer at a riverbank in the town of Seymour. In the weeks leading up to his death, officers say Kramer was stressed and anxious. Captain Corey Shalinski says Kramer was stressed because of his job and health. We can only imagine how many tragic and horrific scenes Sheriff Kramer responded to in 47 years of service. We do not know the reason for his decision, but we will always know what he meant to this community and what the community meant to him. Kramer joined the department in 1975 as a reserve deputy. He served as sheriff for 26 years. Going forward, the Eau Claire law enforcement community will be requiring officers to take part in mandatory one-on-one -on -one meetings with a mental health professional. The department says no officer should have to handle trauma on their own. The Viroqua mayor filed five charges against police chief Richard Niedfeld for insubordination, failing to report the harassment of a fellow officer, and lying to the public. According to the investigator, a former officer says he was harassed by and the chief did nothing about it. The mayor also accused the chief of communicating with the public without former Mayor Karen Mitchell's authorization and lying to a citizen about the number of public meetings regarding the department's thin blue line logo. The mayor also accused Niedfeld of labeling an officer under investigation in a database, which was inaccurate. The town of Campbell is one step closer to drilling a test well to find clean water. The town board approved a bid to drill a well to a lower aquifer and test that for PFAS. The water will also be tested for other possible contaminants. La Crosse County approved spending $100,000 for that test drill project. Town leaders say that drilling will begin within the next month. Nurses in Minnesota decide on whether or not to go on strike later today. On Wednesday night, nurses voted on what they call a potential unfair labor practice strike at 16 hospitals in the Twin Cities, Twin Ports, and Two Harbors. They say hospital CEOs refused to settle fair contracts with 15,000 nurses who were fighting to put patients before profits. According to the president of the Nurses Association, they never wanted to get to that point. When we came back from our last strike in September, we hoped our hospital executives would hear us about the urgency of the crisis in our hospitals. But since then, things have gotten worse and not better. And according to the MNA's official website, they represent over 94 hospitals. Temperatures this morning are well into the teens out there, so make sure to grab that winter jacket. But we will be looking at decreasing clouds, leading to increasing sunshine, though, and also a south wind to help us out, too. That should warm temperatures above the freezing mark, especially later this afternoon around 3 o'clock, 35 degrees, and a little warmer today. I'm just waiting for that afternoon hour. Thanks, Derek. La Crosse County will spend $1.3 million for stormwater infrastructure. The grants, funded by the American Rescue Plan Act, will go to the towns of Campbell, Holland, Shelby, and Onalaska. Projects will include upgrading storm sewers, ditches, and sediment control infrastructure to try and help protect homes from flooding. In the meantime, the city of La Crosse is asking people to salt smart and know the three S's, shovel, scatter, and switch. So shovel snow before it turns to ice, scatter salt so it's also spread out, and switch from salt to sand once temperatures get below 15 degrees. The city is giving away free salt cups to people who take online surveys about their salting habits. We have a link with more information on our website, news8000.com. And if your little ones are hoping to hear from the big man himself before Christmas morning, grab a pen and paper. Santa Claus's elves are setting up shop this holiday season with the City of La Crosse Parks, Recreation, and Forest Department. If you mail a letter to Santa to them there, they'll not only guarantee it reaches the North Pole, jolly old St. Nick will be able to send back a response. So just make sure the letter is postmarked by December 11th and address your letter just like that as what you see on your screen. And if you're not as old school, you can also email a letter to letters to Santa at cityoflacrosse.org. And a reminder, News 8 Now's third annual Joy of Sharing donation drive is this Friday, December 2nd at the Onalaska Festival of Foods. We'll get to Derek in a second. <laughs> We're collecting non-perishable food items, new toys, and money for the Hunger Task Force, Toys for Tots, and Salvation Army. 
You can stop by between 5 a.m. Friday and 6.30 p.m. to drop off that donation. Time for weather now. We just couldn't <laughs> wait to get to this forecast today, Ken. It's going to be a little cold out there, but hey, at least the afternoon looks much better. 35 degrees, and then we're at 44 for tomorrow, so a little bit mild there. Slight chance of a rain shower for the Joy of Sharing event. We'll keep our eyes on that, though. We're going to start off the weekend looking a little cold there, Ken. 26 degrees, and then 36 for Sunday, though. It's a little warmer. Okay, not too kind bad. Kind of back and forth, you know what I mean? Yeah, <laughs> it's an interesting week for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, don't forget to keep up with the news of the day on News8000.com, our News8000 app, First Alert weather app. We'll have the latest updates to today's top stories on News8 Now at noon. That's Derek Sibley. I'm Ken Kozrowski. Have a great day.